Good morning. Good morning. Woo. You know, I'm always a little excited. You probably picked up on that. It's subtle, I know. It's subtle, but it's there. And this morning, I am really, really excited about what the Lord wants to say. We had started um, a few weeks ago, two weeks ago, we had talked about um, true spirituality and counterfeit spirituality. And I was ready to, to go with this, and God said, I'd like you to, to do this first. So I paused. So we're just picking up on spirituality and, and what it is. And what he said to me is, how can you tell the difference between um, counterfeit spirituality and true spirituality? What's the <coughs> defining visible thing on it? And he said, joy. Like, it's like, well, you could have given me time to answer. He's like, well, just wanted to make sure you got it right. <laughs> and joy is the characteristic that defines true mature spirituality, which is, well, isn't that a good thing? Who, you know, if you want to walk around and be labeled as something, joyful is a great thing to do, to be, to be identified as. And so we're, I'm just going to cruise all the way through this today. I'm excited because God's going to shift, shift massive things in our minds today. So joy is one of the fruit of the Spirit. Because see, when we invite the Spirit in, when we invite Jesus Christ into our hearts, the Spirit of God comes in to dwell in us. And in Galatians 5.22, everybody, oh, don't tune me out because you've memorized this. Okay? Because I learned something new as I was going, okay, I didn't learn, God told me. Learn is when we think we, yeah, okay. God telling you something totally different. We're still learning, but, you know, let's be clear. We didn't figure it out. <laughs> so the fruit of the Spirit, which his presence within accomplishes, is, I homeschooled my kids off and on, and so we memorize scripture verses, and we're going to have a little school this morning. Are you ready? The first three are one syllable. The next three are two syllables. The last three are three syllables. Love, joy, peace, because everybody remembers the first three. Patience, kindness, goodness, two syllables. Gentleness, faithfulness, self-control. So my kids still know this verse because that's how our brains work. And so I want to talk about joy this morning from the context of, of that it's already within us. And here's the thing, because we are the church, we're the body of Christ. So as we have the Spirit of God in us, and this is the Spirit of God, there should be joy in church. So I grew up, and I think man, we've had generations of people grow up with this concept that you come in church and you must sit down and you must be quiet. Now we try to be really self-controlled before we start to record, but if we're not really thinking about it, we are chatting and laughing and having fun in this place. And there's many times I've gone to preach and I've been downstairs and, you know, I've just gone to get a little place where I just had a little last minute with Jesus and I can hear that noise upstairs. And it's so good because it's joy in God's house. So if you have never experienced joy in church and God is joy, then we're not experiencing the fullness of God in our church, in our, in our services. <laughs> are, are you understanding where I'm going with this? We have portrayed God in an inaccurate because it's an incomplete way. Ooh. You know, I, I, I know people go, oh, you have to, church is fun. See, if people don't have this concept that church is fun, then they don't have an accurate picture of God. And if we're reflecting him, then we're not accurate. We're not reflecting the fullness of who he is. So I, I know it's like, but Charlene, the first fruit is love. And we talked about that all the way through with spirituality, that we function in it and it's everything is love-based. It's the foundation. <clears throat> but the next thing after love is joy. And then peace. And we have this idea in our minds that, you know, if everything's peaceful, like there's no crisis, chaos, or whatever going on, then I'll have joy. But it's not in that order. 
So let's take a look at it. <laughs> we need, obviously, we don't know what joy is. If we think that it's something that comes after everything's perfect, then we, don't to, we do not understand what joy is. Okay, so today we're going to learn. Now, I just want to do this really first. I want you to think of, of a wheel. If you start with love, and out of love, because I'm so totally, completely, unconditionally loved by God, and he's filled me with his spirit, I have joy. Because I have joy, I have peace in every situation. And then, because I'm at peace, I have patience. I don't know if you noticed, but things this last year haven't been altogether perfect. And people are, are frustrated. And they, we haven't operated necessarily with patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness. Yeah, sometimes when things aren't good, people stop being faithful. Ooh, I didn't think this was going to be this zingy, but it's a little zingy. That's okay. That's okay. You know, it's like if there's something there that needs to not be there, let's get it out and get rid of it so that we can carry on whole and without like a bunch of infection in the body, okay? And then the last one is self-control. And it's really important that we, we understand this because we think of self-control as maturity. And we think it means to be totally in control and to contain our emotions. Isn't that what we, that's what we think self-control is? That is not what self-control is. It's like, oh my goodness, she's only been talking five minutes and she's already just slayed all of these misconceptions. Self-control does not mean that we are not emotions, we are not feeling emotions or that we're not expressing them. Self-control means that we control ourselves so that we do not sin. Whoa. <laughs> Doesn't have anything to do with our feelings. We have self-control so that I might want to do this, I might want to say this, I might want to act this way, but I'm not going to. Because that's not how Jesus would act. That's not what Jesus would say. That's certainly not how Jesus is thinking. Okay, so our emotions, and, and, and sometimes we think, like it's this maturity thing. We're just going to kill maturity today, what we think maturity is. Because, you know, kids, out of control. Laugh and jump and shout and scream and having a good time. And it's like, we're not like that. We're adults. We're mature. We don't need humor or laughter. Excuse me, kids don't pay to go see com comedians. Ooh, I saw some funny stuff this week. I love it. There's some great comedians. There's some like, oh, okay, not ever. Just you, It takes about one joke and you know this is either somebody I'm going to put a little follow or not. Right? Because some stuff, some people think you have to be vile and crude to be funny, and you don't. It's actually not funny. I think sometimes people laugh more because they're uncomfortable, right? But really, true humor, we pay, we pay to laugh. So don't tell me that maturity goes, oh, I don't have to laugh anymore. We do, and we know it. We pay for it. Okay, so whew, when we catch ourselves not exhibiting the spokes, on the wheel, because remember I did start with this, I lost my train of thought, but it's back. Okay, uh, we, have, we have patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control. When we're finding that, oh, those are not functioning, we have to walk back to, where am I not at peace? Okay, what is its situation? And then I need to get into joy with it. And, and I get into joy by recognizing I'm totally and unconditionally loved, and God is totally in control of everything. Right, so we don't have to be. Okay, so walk it back. I'm going to give you a few three-word keys today. Walk it back is one of them. If you Because the issue isn't that you don't have patience. The issue is that you're not in peace because you don't have joy. Okay, so that's, it's really, really important. We don't deal with it. Cut the head of the dandelion off, go for the root. Okay, now Romans 14, 17 says the kingdom of God, because I know some of you are like, I know the word Charlene, and it goes love, joy, peace, but in this other place it goes peace, joy, and it's not in the same order, so I'm just blowing up your whole theory here, except it's not. See, this is what's talking about what's within us, but the kingdom of God, Romans 14, 17, says the kingdom of God is not meat and drink. In other words, it's not natural, physical things, but it's righteousness, peace, and joy. 
Now, because God has given his righteousness for me, and I've accepted that, I asked Jesus Christ into my life, so now his righteousness, he just looks at me, and it's like, I got this gift the other day, and somebody stamped it with a little burn, you know, the little burn thing, and it's got this, made by with love. I don't know if it says with love, but it's just really cute, and it's like this stamped. This is made by. My righteousness is made by God, and I've got it. I don't always necessarily walk in it, but when God looks at me, he sees I'm righteous. Because of that, I'm at peace with God. Because I'm at peace with God, I don't have to not be at peace with people. Because I'm not looking to people to give me or make me or fulfill me or do what I want in order for me to be happy. And then, because, and then the fulfillment of that is joy. So in the, and, and it, it says in the Bible, the kingdom of God, but it might be a little bit un, easy for us to understand if we said the nation of God, because this is God's government. This is how God governs. He governs, he imparts righteousness, and when there's righteousness, there's automatically peace and joy. And you go, but, but it's not a nation. The nation is believers all over the world, because it's a kingdom over all the other kingdoms. Okay, so that's how God governs things. But within our life, we have joy because it's the fruit of the Spirit. So this is God's nature. Joy is God's nature. It's not an emotion. I'm going to say it one more time because some of you are writing it down. Joy is God's nature. It's not an emotion. If we think it's an emotion, we think we don't have it unless we're feeling happy. So we're going to go through three things. We're going to say, what does joy look like? What rejoices? And what things release joy? Oh, four things. What things release joy in our life? And then what does joy do? Okay, so what does joy look like? This is, this is what I did. Because I had a bunch of scriptures rolling around in my head about joy. And then I went to my computer... And I have this program that Brent put on called like email, but it's called eSword. So just for fun, you can you can type out search and I put in the word joy. And it gave me like I don't know, 135, 153, I'm turning those <laughs> scriptures that have the word joy in it. Mm -hmm. I didn't look up joyfulness, I didn't look up cheerful, I didn't look up happy, I didn't look up celebrate, I didn't look up any I just looked up the one word, joy. And I read all of the verses that were in the Bible that had the word joy in them. And as I'm reading, I start to see categories. So we're, instead of reading all 153 verses, we're just going to go over all the categories. Because this, this is just the tree of joy. This is what joy looks like. It looks like leaping. And I really, really want to leap. But if I knock over the camera or the light, Brent's going to be struggling to hold on to his joy. And I don't want to do that. But we see, we have all leapt for joy. It means, are you ready to spin around? I didn't wear my slippy shoes. These are really grippy shoes, so I'm not even going to spin around. But I spin, spin, you've seen it? Kids do, we spin around, people spin around. You see, you see it all the time. The Rough Rider scored, pulled it out in the last 21 seconds of the game against the Blue Bombers. Woo! 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 You're making stuff up now. <laughs> I'm not making stuff up. There are times the Winnipeg Blue Bombers get to spin too. Listen, do, right, this, this is not foreign to us. That's what joy looks like. It's actually visible. It's physically visible. There's another word, because all of the... When you go onto the eSword program, it gives you all these definitions of what the word joy means. I'm not, I'm not just making these up. This is what God's word, this is what the, these words mean. It means shout, a strident shout. And Brent grows, he's, I said, hey, read over my notes. He goes, I have never used that word. What does the word strident mean? So I gave him an illustration from a, you know, a movie. But I'm, I'm like, oh, I could change the word. And God says, no, that's a really good word. It means to cut through. Whoa, what do you have over your life that you need to cut through so it falls off? Yeah, joy. Ooh, clamorous battle cry. 
cheerful pleasure do you see do you see the variance of this loud celebration joy has a voice a sound in Jeremiah 33 it talks about the sound of joy and you can tell you, you, you can hear it as you're coming into a party or something. That's, have you, we've all walked in, and it's like, whoo, and you want to get in the room because there's joy in there, right? We've all experienced this. It's really attractive, isn't it? And joy is visible. In my heart. Joy is visible, it has a sound, and it's felt in the atmosphere. That's what it looks like. Okay, so so with all of that, what should church look like? Mmm, girl. Okay, what rejoices? God. Let's start with God. God rejoices. Zephaniah 3.17 says, The Lord your God is in the midst of you. He, he's moving in your midst. He's singing over you. He's rejoicing over you. When you read and you take that word rejoice and he's singing over you and you look at what they mean in the Hebrew, God is singing and spinning around over you in celebration. Those are my kids. See, we think, I don't know what, I don't know what people think God, God's on his throne. And he is. But he is rejoicing. Like I rejoice over my children. Like I rejoice over my grandchildren. Because it's like a little removed, so it's more fun. <laughs> right? It's like there's this celebration. God celebrates over us. Which really knocks out of the ballpark this thing that he's just watching and waiting for us to mess up. Believers rejoice. These are this is all in the scripture. If there's more than one verse, so I just I just put them under categories. The nations rejoice. A whole nation can rejoice. And you know what? There was because there's this a prophetic word for Canada that the the with the we, we're the only ones that have a leaf on our flag, and it's like the leaves or the trees are for the healing of the nation, and joy, laughter brings health to our bodies. So Noel prayed that this morning. He said that when Canada, when we get healed ourselves, we will have the joy of the Lord as a nation and we will be able to export that healing to other nations. Amen. It sure beats, I'm just looking, I'm just, woo, I'm looking forward. So whole nations will rejoice. The earth, the sun, the moon, and the stars, all of creation rejoices. They also groan, waiting for the return of Jesus. And the earth groans with bloodshed, but the earth and the sun, the moon, the stars, and all creation, the, you, come on, it's springtime. Who goes driving and there's little calves in the field? Mm -hmm. Those suckers are cute and they frolic. <laughs> and puppies, puppies, like, the, right? And they're, they're rejoicing. That's just their, that's just their normal. Things. I'm not sure why we grow out of this. Well, I get why cows do. They're big and lumberous, but I have also seen them kick. Just saying, but it's not really from joy. Okay. <laughs> it's it's just nature rejoices. The, the Bible says when Jesus came and they're like, they shouldn't be worshiping you. They're having a big party and it's loud and the religious people, that's where church has to be really quiet. That's a spirit of religion. The religious people said, stop them. And he said, if I stop people from wor worshiping me, the rocks and the stones will cry out. Mm -hmm. Whoa. Okay, that's what rejoices. So basically everything. What things release joy in our lives? Because we need to know this. This is the per first thing. Uh, even though it's, it's where we have to release everything from. God gives us joy. It's his, it's his gift because it's the gift of the Holy Spirit. So everybody say, I have joy. I have joy. Is that three words? I have joy. It's really, really important. If the Holy Spirit lives within you and you, God is within you and God is joy, we have joy. 
It's his gift and it's everlasting. And that word everlasting means if you look until you can't see anything more, and then when you get there, you look and you cannot see anything more. So if that's the case, we don't have to have like little tiny bits of joy in case we run out. We can't see the end of it. Romans 15, 13 says, you are crammed full of joy by God. Crammed full of it. So I don't, I don't know, whenever I think of crammed full, I think of Thanksgiving or Christmas. And we have a little joke in our house. I think it's from Monty Python. Sorry. <laughs> It's like one wafer, come on, just have one. I cannot have one, even one wafer thin little mint. I am so full. You know that. You know that feeling. Easter's coming. We also eat big at Easter. <laughs> We're supposed to celebrate. That's actually a biblical principle, is to have feasts and celebrate. So if you think of I literally could not put one more little bite of food in my body, that full and the word actually is satisfied my soul is satisfied it's not longing for joy so we have to think this way because if we don't we won't use joy and we need to use joy it's like you can't use an emotion it's not an emotion joy is a thing from God okay so what releases it and it's not Charlene's joy I put a little note here and I just found it now Look down at my notes. <laughs> Always a good idea. I don't have joy. It's like we think, ooh, I can get joy. I don't have joy. I have God's joy in me. Because, see, we think our joy goes like this, 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 depending on what's going on. Because we label something to be joy that's not. I don't actually have any Charlene joy. I only have God joy. An unlimited supply. So what releases joy? Worship. That's one of the things that releases joy. Okay. Giving. Oh. Giving. They actually study. There's different cultures. Cultures that understand that, uh, people that aren't feeling happy or they're struggling with depression. They go like, you need, in order to fix this, you need to go do things for other people. And the depression goes away. In other countries, North America is pretty strong on this. We think if I just get more, if I get this, I'll be happy. If I, this happens, I'll be happy. If this, I can make myself happy by getting all this stuff or having all of these good things. And it doesn't take it away. They've studied this. It's not even a church study or a Bible based business. It's, it's actually people, just psychologists have studied this. And it's like people and, and cultures that give when they're feeling depressed, recognize, oh, I feel better. That's a God thing. And in, in 2 Corinthians, there was, Paul was talking to this group of people, about this group of people that he had gone to see because there was a prophetic word that there was going to be a famine in a big part of the world. God knows what's coming so we can get prepared for it before it happens. Even if the enemy's trying to bring something good, bad, God says, tells us ahead of time. We talked about that all last week, foreseeing. And so prophets said there's going to be a famine. So churches all over, bodies of believers all over, gave offerings so that they would have finances to get food supply into where the, the um, famine was going to be. And there was this, this group of people, this part of uh, this city nation thing that was very, very poor. But they were believers. And they were like, we can give something. And, and, and it's kind of like this thing. You can't tell what started first. They were so happy that they could give, that they gave that made them happy. And, it, and it's hard to understand in the verse because Paul says, in their joy, they gave out of their lack. It's like, we're supposed to give out of our overflow? It's like, God wouldn't expect me to give out of my lack. But when they did, they were just, ooh, filled with joy. And when you sow into something, you're always going to reap. Because it's a, it's a God-designed principle. So they went, okay, what can we give? Because even though they didn't have a lot, they had food. And these guys weren't going to have food. So I can go without something. Because, you know, things change. Life changes. You know, over the years, we accumulate stuff. 
that it, you, you know when we were younger and first married oh wouldn't it be great to have this and now it's like oh we gotta purge oh because it, it you know you think it will make you happy or make your life easier and it's not always true it's like man let's have a garage sale okay giving releases joy the joy that's already in us that God has filled us up with is released by worship giving and deliverance internal and external deliverance whether we're delivered from our circumstances the situation that we're in and God does or whether there are things within our our spirit our soul and our body that we need to be delivered from anxiety or stress or fear or all kinds of things that people need to be delivered from when God delivers us we have joy obedience releases joy oh yay it does there's just something that happens when God says, will you do this and you do it? I have a story I'm going to tell you if I have time. A little testimony of what God did. I was, da I was dancing around the house when Brent came home on Friday. It was cool. Relationships release the joy that's within us. First of all, our relationship with God. And then it says, the joy of the Lord is my strength. So as we're in relationship with God and have his joy, we have strength. Relationships with the family of God release joy in our lives because he designed it to function that way. Yay. Glad you're here. Makes me smile to see people. We are designed to function, which is why it's really, really important to see people's smiles and faces. It releases joy. There's a verse in Psalm 42. And David's having a rough day when he writes this psalm. Like a really rough day. And he's just telling, he's like, God, I'm happy. He's, it's okay. He's clearly defining all the things that's going on. He says, but I'm remembering how when I went into your house and worshipped, the joy that was there. And then he goes on and he starts to say, so God, as you delivered me out of everything else, and I know you're going to deliver me out of this. And, and so in the middle of everything that was going on, he just inserted joy. But he recognized that it came from that relationship of being with, with other believers, with people who love God. It just was a key part of it. The morning releases joy. Like like an actual morning yes literally when the sun comes up it is a daily visual reminder that light I love God I mean he, every morning the way he does this every morning for us a reminder that light dispels darkness no matter what is going on there's sunrise it's a reminder that light dispels darkness always it is impossible darkness has to flee with the light and you know even if we're not through it yet we've got a reminder that the, the light of God is, is will dispel this darkness okay work how did that even make it on the list well it's in the Bible the devil perverts work he's really really twisted the concept of work we are designed by God to enjoy work there's some, once in a while, Brent and I'll do something in the yard in the fall to make it easier for the next year. And then snow comes, everything covers, and then, does this happen to anybody else? And then you, it melts, and it's like, oh, I forgot. <laughs> and it's the, the joy. At the time, it was hot, sweaty, painful. Sometimes we get scratched. My rose bushes scratch me. No matter how hard I try and how much I put on, I end up getting scratched when I prune those things. It's like, ooh, but then the roses are beautiful. Okay, with not not having work, we have if we have not understood this before this last year, we understand it now. Not having work is one of the most stressful, painful, debilitating things on the planet. So whining about not having a great job instead of being thankful and joyful and celebrating that I got one there are people who don't and while I have it I have income coming in and if I'm not happy with this one I could maybe take a course or read something or develop myself or I can keep looking and applying for other jobs but in the meantime I'm eating 
and my family is eating. And while I'm here, God, I'm in relationship with all of these people. Is there anybody that you would like to love through me? And this earth is only temporary anyways. So heaven, heaven's rocking with amazing things that I was wearing my little shiny things this morning because I like shiny things. These aren't real. These are real. This is real. But it's just, I mean, the pavement in heaven is gold. The streets are gold. The Bible says that. Okay, so we're running around trying to get pretty things. Guys, what would you call a pretty thing? Tools? A Porsche? Lamborghini? I can't remember which one it is. Porsche. Oh, they're all good? Yeah. Whichever. Whichever. I would take either. Right? See those? But it's like... It's so it's such a minute, but but we're attracted to things because it's going to be in heaven, just natural, normal, everywhere, because God is light. So think rainbow and jewels and reflecting, and it's just like, and we get this little portion. And there's a reason we're attracted to it, to beauty on earth, is because heaven is just totally filled with it, and God loves beauty. So we need to just celebrate work, because it will release joy. If we don't celebrate work then you're going to be very unhappy. And if we're eating and we're paying our bills, we need to not be unhappy. Amen. Amen. Okay, Amen. just checking. Speaking releases joy. It's, it's released by our words. It's determined and created in the natural realm by how we speak, not ever by our circumstances. That's Proverbs 15, 23. So you can be in the middle of whatever... And we have been through a lot of whatevers, the key word being through. But we have learned. <laughs> Didn't start out this smart, but I got smarter. We have learned that when you speak to something and you speak, I have joy in this because God has it available for me and I'm going to speak joy into my heart, into my life, into my mind, even though circumstances are not great. It should be the defining thing that when people look at us, it's like, I don't understand it because I know what's going on in their life, but they're totally at peace and I, they, they actually look at and act happy. And they don't understand, but they know it's not anything that they're experiencing. Reading and consuming the word releases joy in our life which is why the devil really works overtime to stop people from reading the Bible he doesn't want you happy and it was again you know Noel's like I just got this verse as we're getting ready to pray praying this morning and he says I was I don't understand exactly but it's like God, God turned the water into wine which is a real party Jesus first miracle was a party that's important I know so what he took was, the, and, and the Bible says the water is the word, the water of the word. Jesus said, I'm the living water and the bread of life. I am the word. So he took the, wa the word and he turned it into wine, celebration, joy, party. Whoo. That's, that's a significant thing there that we don't always notice because we don't take it out of the natural. But everything in the Bible isn't just natural. There's a spiritual picture over top of it because that's how God does things you will never ever think of Jesus turning the water into wine at the wedding again in the same way just like Jesus turns as I read the word of God it miraculously turns into joy in my life so if you wake up and you're going through something get out your word and say okay let's make some wine Jesus <laughs> okay Holy Spirit you just hover over this stuff and as it comes in one way it's going to come out joy Okay? All right. Faith makes us joyful. I believe because I know who God is, that he, and I trust him because he's been faithful in everything. I trust him, and so I have an expectation. See, faith is in the middle of the storm that we're going to get through the storm to the other side because Jesus is in the boat. And so faith makes us joyful in, instead of, oh, life is hard. 
it's like life's only hard for a little while because I have an expectation. It's kind of like ladies, men, you might think you understand this, you never will, but there's this thing called birth. And, you know, we get excited as to be, and then it just gets a little heavier at the end. Just, if we could just get a boulder. I know Brent's going, <laughs> you know? And it's just like, it's like there's this birthing thing. And if it wasn't that we had an expectation that the end was going to be good. Love you, Jesus. He produces. Joy produces good things. Right, so in the middle of it, faith just hey, faith releases it. If you don't believe that God's gonna be your deliverer, you will not have joy in the midst. It's really interconnect, interconnected. So what does joy do? It keeps us healthy. That's the word of God. It says laughter is medicine, and that you know the government can't sell that, and you can't. You know, inject it through a needle, but you you need to inject joy. You, you need to understand that you have been vaccinated against everything when you have joy. It's like <laughs> I'm walking around. I have a spiritual vaccination. It makes us attractive. I didn't say it made you good looking. <laughs> You know what, uh, we, we've all seen pictures really, really what we would, the world would call or consider somebody beautiful, but they're haranguing somebody, and you're just like, whoa, like wouldn't want to live with that. But there's people, like we're attracted to happy people. Are we not? If you had to choose, you're going to go, uh, be honest, if we had to choose who to go hang out with, we're going to go hang out with happy peeps. We're drawn to it. Joy, what else? It does, it's a bucket. It's a scoop. That's in the Bible, absolutely. With joy, with joy, your scoop of joy, you will draw water from the wells of salvation. It is the bucket. There, it, it, we have, you got the picture, there's a well. You're gonna draw up the water. The container it's coming up in is joy. It's your scoop. Everything that Jesus died for us to receive, our inheritance, the water refreshing of it, comes from the well of salvation. So we access things in the spirit realm with joy. When you need something from the source of everything, which is what God is, who God is, don't whine, beg, or cry. Ask with joy. And I, I, I know when times get hard, we're on our face crying before the Lord. Been there, done that. We do. I have a little story to tell you. The other day, I was hanging out with a mom. And one of her kids come up, and it was just like, ah, I can't even do it, because I'm not, like, under it. And there was just one, ah, and you know what? <laughs> I was like, ooh, you're a good mom. And, and uh, she just turned and looked and just said, what is it exactly that you'd like? Can you just tell me? And it's like, I can't get my boot on. And <laughs> I'm like, I'd have never gotten that out of the wine. <laughs> and, uh, but the thing is, how it felt in the room with a to like I can't get my boot on and it was like <laughs> boom and it's like don't whine and he, here's the thing because she's she's teaching we have to teach and train our kids how to become adults so think about this if God responds to us when we're whining begging and crying then we think that works but he doesn't because he said, draw out what you need with joy. Ask with joy. Three words, writing them down. Joy accomplishes things that fearful intercession will never receive. You can intercede. You can intercede for months and days and years. Or you can ask with joy. Joy looks forward. Hebrews 12, 2. 
Looking away from all that will distract to Jesus. See, focus is huge. Jesus, the leader and the source and the finisher of our faith for the joy, because he modeled it, of obtaining the prize that was set before him. Everybody say, I am the prize. I am the prize. I am the prize. He got through the cross because he was looking and seeing you. <laughs> Just overwhelming love. When, for all the things that we've ever gone through, we haven't gone through that. But he got through it because he looked ahead. He endured the cross, despising and ignoring the shame, and he's now seated at the right hand of God. So we need to look forward to what God has for us. And if you can't see it on earth, look to heaven. But you will see it on earth. We will see it. We will see it. He's good. We have to look forward. Joy allows us to look forward. Number five, joy redefines trials and testing. Redefines. When we label something incorrectly, we reap what we label it. Okay, if you're going to call something something, then you're going to interact with it that way. In James 1, verse 2, it, it says that our trials and testings, it says, be joyful when you have trials and testings. It's like, seriously, what were you on when you wrote that? He was on the anointing. Trials and testings are things that make us mature. They make us steadfast. They make us enduring. They make us patient. They're not great, but they do grow up. It's like resistance in the spirit realm. It's like weights. You push it, you get stronger. So when the devil pushes against and tries to resist us, we resist back. Here's the thing. Fullness of joy takes us in the midst of a trial into a place where the enemy can't reach us. Like it's a literal place in the midst of everything where when we step into joy, it's just like this is just developing something in me. So I'm, if it's just developing something in you, which a good thing in you, I might as well be joyful about it because when I come out, I'm going to be different, better, more like Jesus. So that's how we rejoice when trials come. And it's like, okay, I can either hang out in the circumstances and the devil can like whack at us or you can step back into joy because he can't go there. He literally, he literally cannot go there. I, it's, you're going to have to, if you haven't experienced it yet, you're going to have to understand the wowness of that. You're going to have to experience it for yourself. And so if you just literally step back into it and say, I am stepping into joy and you can't come here. Okay. I thought that was good. Joy is a catalyst. <laughs> I got one thumbs up. Joy is a catalyst for change. It's like when you have the situation and you insert joy into it, it's like it changes. It totally changes the situation. Isaiah 61. God says, I'm going to give you, Jesus, Jesus said, this is me, by the way. This is, I'm giving you the oil of joy for mourning. God turns our mourning into dancing. This is, this is how joy works. You're in a situation that's mourning, sad, grieving, whatever, and, and you just say, okay, I'm going to do something really spiritual now, God. Are you watching? He's inside me, so let's dance together. And it's like, I'm going to dance. Put on some fun music and just say, I am dancing. Because your word says, you turn my mourning into dancing. It doesn't mean we don't experience pain. If he died to, and he bore our sorrows, we're going to have sorrows. But when we rejoice, it takes the sorrow off and it puts it on Jesus who bore it on the cross. But this is how we interact in the spirit realm. We actually joy. In 1 Thessalonians 3 verse 9, Paul says, we joy over you with joy. I'm going, God, that's not a grammatically correct sentence. And he's like, it is if joy is a verb. 
Mm. Joy is not an emotion. It's a verb. <laughs> so he called me up. What are you doing today, Charlene? I am joying. <laughs> I'm joying. It's a verb. And and it talks about the oil of joy. It, when he turns our mourning into dancing, that is a miracle. Sometimes it's like we say, oh, there's no miracles because, you know, I haven't seen blind eyes opened. I haven't raised anybody from the dead yet. And I, ha you know, d whatever. And it's like, but I have had him turn my mourning into dancing. That is a miracle. And if you go, well, I don't really think it is, then you haven't really mourned. Because that is a miracle. And just like that, he will do it. And he talk when it talks about the oil, it it's like uh, grease, like slick, like the stuff on the geese are back. Did you notice it's spring? It's like water off a duck's back. It actually cannot penetrate through the oil. So when we when we clothe ourselves with oil, it's like stuff can't st it can't get through to us and it can't stick on us, it slides off. It's not that we don't go through things, but we slide through them. <laughs> and the other thing that's really, really great about this is we all rub off on each other. You might as well be rubbing Jesus off on other people. It, they might as well be that if you're gonna rub off on other people, come on now, you've been in environments where you walked away and went, I just, that was, I got slimed. I feel gross. Come on, we've all been in situations like that. Well, that, that was not good. So I just, I have made a decision that I will adjust those situations or I will walk away. Because you don't always have authority to change stuff. But if, if people try doing that in my home, no. So we'll just, truth and joy, yeah. And, and so if you're going to rub off on people, rub off, rub joy. Slather them with joy. They will either get joyful or they will go away. Some people don't want to be happy. It's, I don't, I, I, I can't, I cannot comprehend that. They're a complete sentence. <laughs> That's what joy is. You have it. You have more than you will ever need. So as we are functioning in the spirit realm, this is the commodity. Commodity has to do with currency, correct? Mm -hmm. This is our currency in the spirit realm. Like it is not a feeling. And if we don't understand that, we're not going to use it. We, we get to use the joy that he put within us to get what he wants us to have and to get rid of what we don't want to have. It actually functions in the spirit realm. And in the meantime, we look good. But I want to just take a minute now because God said something really serious to me this morning while I was drinking my coffee. And... Uh, He said, if joy is the commodity of the Lord, he said, and, and it's the ability to look forward. He just, you know, God does this. He d downloads something really, really huge on you in a second, and then you have to try to communicate it, and it takes longer, <laughs> and, and his feelings or impressions. But he just, he just reminded me of certain situations, and he reminded me of a young man who committed suicide. So he had my attention. Because, see, the devil doesn't want us to function and flow in joy. He wants to kill. He wants people to not be able to look forward through things, and they think this will never get any better. The best thing to do is just die so I stop feeling. And that is a rampant thing on the earth right now because of what we've gone through this last year. And at some level or other, so many people have experienced it. 
And, and so many people have taken their lives because they don't know the truth. So if the body of Christ isn't walking around looking joyful, what, we, we have had no nothing to offer. We have it. We're, we're over full stuffed up to here with it. But it's not coming out. So this morning you might need to repent. God, I, I, I didn't release your joy into anything this year. God, I didn't speak joy into my circumstances this year. I didn't dance. I know y'all gonna go home. Will y'all go home and dance? <coughs> A little dance. We could dance out the door. I, I have to tell you, it's just because people don't understand, sometimes they don't have revelation of this. I have heard it on more than one occasion, but one one occasion was an actual conversation where somebody said, I just, you know, the people in your church are so happy. And it came across like a negative thing. <laughs> I had to work at not getting miffed. I got miffed. And I'm like, okay, God. And I'm like, why is that a bad thing? Like you think being spiritual, and it's like, oh, they're always smiling, and you know, we greet and we hug, and da, 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 da. this is like, that's it's, it's not church, you know, it's not they're not mature, and I'm like, oh my, like you have no idea because you don't know them, you don't know what they're going through at this moment that you saw joy on their face, you have no idea what they are believing. God to fix, to restore, to heal. You just thought they were fluffy happy and didn't have any depth to them. Joy is deep. And if you can manifest joy in the midst of sorrow and trials, then you are way more spiritual and way more mature than people who've never released joy or had it ooze out of them. Because God is joy. So if he's in the house, like, I don't think, yeah, he said, I can say, I don't think he likes going into churches where it's sad all the time. <laughs> he just said, it's no fun. <laughs> it's, it's no fun. Does that make God immature? No, see, that's, he's like, they're not, <coughs> the world needs the joy that we're carrying. It desperately needs it right now. Okay, he said I can say one more thing. Uh, one of the things that um, has, it's kind of a newer thing in our life is, is um, my dad and Brent's mom has passed away within the last two years. And so and God reminded me of this last night. We grieved, but we were joyful at the same time. Mm -hmm. And see, if you think joy is an emotion, then it seems incompatible. But we were really super excited that they'd shed these bodies and they were in heaven. We were grieving because we missed them. But really, you should, the funerals were fun. We had fun, family times and memories and laugh. There was laughter and food and laughter and food and laughter and food. And, and somebody just needed to hear that this morning that's listening, that you can grieve and be joyful at the same time. But it only lasts for the night and then joy comes in the morning we don't stay there we go through it and then we don't stay in grief if we stay in grief we open the door up to a spirit of grief we invite it back in and or we never get out of it and it's not how God wants us to live he took them home to heaven Woo I'm going to see them again so a lot of this is only something that you'll understand if you are spiritually, if you've chosen to spiritually connect with God. 
Otherwise, you just go, that doesn't even make sense. And you cannot access the joy of the Lord unless he's living in your heart. It's just, that's where it is. That's where the well is. So I want to say two things. Thank you, Jesus. I want to say if this has been really eye-opening for you and you've never given your life to Jesus to do that today and just say I decided which spiritual path I'm going to go on and Jesus I choose you I choose you I choose you I invite him to come in because he's gonna he washes out the heaviness the guilt the shame the fear he washes away our sin and then he takes up residence. And when the Holy Spirit takes up residence, love, joy, peace, we are filled with joy. And then we can begin to access it. And the second thing is, if you have struggled with depressed or suicidal thoughts, I just want you to cry out to the Lord. Say, God, I'm doing this with joy. I'm asking you with joy to take that away because that's not from you. It's a lie. Holding on to joy is one of the most important contributions that we make because we live with God. So our job, our part of it is to hold on to joy and it aligns us with him in absolutely everything. And when we are aligned with God, it closes the door to negativity, depression, sadness, anxiety. When, when all of those things are going on, it's like, whoo, I'm not aligned with God. And, and when we align with God, we have confident expectation that he's going to do something awesome in our lives. No one can take away our joy when our hearts know how to rejoice in God. The devil cannot steal. There's this, oh, the devil stole my joy. He did not. Like, that's a lie. There's, you know, little phrases that used to fly around the church. The devil cannot steal your joy. You have to give it to him. Or you have to stop accessing it. You have to stop using it. When, but if you rejoice in God, he, he can't touch it. But that joy is our refuge, I said that earlier. It's a miracle cure. Joy is what cures our sadness, our weariness, our insecurity. It is impossible to feel insecure or inferior when we are filled with joy. Have you ever seen anybody partying? Kids just, are they, they are not feeling bad. You, you cannot feel bad about yourself or that there's something wrong with you when you're partying. Have you, ever, have you ever seen it happen at the same time? No, because we're full of joy. You're not even thinking about yourself. You're just happy. Joy is power. Is that three words? Ah! You can have all these three word things on your fridge. Joy is power. It empowers our growth. It empowers our victory. It, joy is the power to everything. It is the fuel in our tanks. He said, the joy of the Lord is our strength. So I want to release you to function in it. One of my favorite quotes by Joyce Meyer is, if you want to destroy your life, the quickest way to do it is to live by your feelings. We do not live by how we feel. Thank you, God, that joy is not a feeling. Amen? Let's pray. Father, I release this word. God, I thank you that joy cuts through whatever is hindering us. God, I thank you that there are there's some fantastic God things that are about to happen on the earth and that we have the ability to step into them with excitement and that we're not going to have to pull ourselves up out of the pit 
as your goodness becomes like evident and overflowing all over the earth that that we're not we're going to be ready there to party <laughs> with it and god we don't make light of anything that anybody's going through jesus you died for this so we don't make light of it but we choose to not make trials problems circumstances situations have any more power over our lives we release joy and the power of it to overcome everything Jesus you said have joy for I have overcome the world and so we choose that this morning and every minute of every day God I pray that we would reflect you accurately by living with joy and father if there's anyone right now listening that is battling a spirit of suicide I cut that spirit off at its roots I speak the blood of Jesus against it I declare that this assignment of the enemy against whoever this person is is null and void it is ineffective it is useless it will not accomplish what the devil sent it to do but father we speak your life into that situation your love your joy and your peace in Jesus name amen your testimony. oh testimony next week actually I'm probably not preaching next week but <laughs> I'll share it soon I'll share it soon <laughs>